What's up guys? Welcome back to another video. Oh, nuts. No, I mean literally nuts. I'm going to talk about nuts <laughs> in this video. Nuts and intelligence, actually. <clears throat> what do they have to do with one another? Again, nothing. But that's what I got in store for you today anyway. But first, as always, I want to remind you that I have books for sale. They are down in the description. There's one link to rule them all. That will be where you can find all my books, including Live in Cambodia, a guide for living in the Kingdom of Wonder, of course. And my two horror anthologies and my slasher comedy novelette called Brookhaven. We're just set in a nursing home. It's funny and it's bloody. And that one's only a dollar. Now, if you bought them all separately, that would be $15. But if you want to help support the channel directly and get all my future books for free, all you got to do is send a $10 donation or more to my PayPal address, which is linked down below. And I will send you all five books. You'll be put on my list. You'll get all, my, all the rest of my books that I ever write absolutely free. You get a discount, you help support the channel, and I appreciate you. Plus, of course, you'll get my email address with a thank you letter, and uh, if you have any questions about anything, you can feel free to use that to email me. Any questions you have about Cambodia or anything else. So go ahead and check out that link. Consider donating. We're trying to get $350 this month, and that would be fantastic if you could help stuff for me stuff for you so win-win um, yeah just found out today that uh, Cambodia has uh, has a pretty huge cashew market going on to the tune of about 1.2 billion dollars worth of cashew exports per year this is something I was not aware of like I say, I'm always finding out new things about the Kingdom of Wonder. <clears throat> but they export about 1.2 to 1.3 billion dollars worth of cashews per year. But here's the thing. Here's the thing I found kind of weird, but to me anyway, out of that, 98% or about 1 billion dollars of cashew exports goes to one country. In that country, Vietnam. That's right, Vietnam imports $1 billion worth of cashews from Cambodia every year. Uh, now, why do they do this? Well, I think it's simple economics, according to what I read. Once they import those cashews from Cambodia, they turn around every year and export them to other countries to about the tune of three billion dollars. So that's a two billion dollar profit uh, for Vietnam every year. But I don't know, I, I heard that, I don't know anything about economics or anything like that. But uh, I keep thinking, hey, why don't Cambodia figure out where they're, where Vietnam's exporting those cashews and just uh, cut out the middleman, get, get some of that, uh, uh, you know, $3 billion. <laughs> That's just me, though. By the way, these things are really good. If you ever get a chance, if you ever see these things, those are excellent. Nice little steamed uh, cakes inside or different things depending on the color. I like the ones that have pork and pork, egg, and a little bit of onion. <clears throat> I like those. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. That that just kind of surprised me, you know. I mean, that's a that's a lot. That's a lot of nuts, man. <laughs> and I did, I wasn't even aware that Cambodia grew that many uh, cashew nuts. <clears throat> nothing I've ever. Hello. There's nothing I've ever uh, noticed or paid attention to. If I did, but I think that's pretty cool. But like I said, I'm not an expert in everything. Nobody is. 
we all have things we're intelligent and smart about and we all have things that uh, we're not so smart about all of us and uh, a new report came out that just said that Cambodia ranks second in IQ scores for all the countries in Southeast Asia and 14th worldwide now of course when you're talking about a standardized IQ test you know those things have their detractors people who say it's uh, you can't determine the IQ of a country based on the metrics they use uh, or anything like that <clears throat> and I would tend to agree with that you can't you know you can take a you can take a sampling of any community or any country give them a test and, and kind of base it around those uh, those standards but it doesn't really reflect the IQ of, of an entire country and everybody within it obviously <clears throat> But still, Cambodia did rank a one above uh, Canada, even. So that was kind of weird. It's like a, you would think a, uh, a, a developed, a fully developed country <coughs> would rank higher in their IQ scores than an underdeveloped country. But not according to this, uh, what was it, the World Report or something like that. Some organization that does that type of thing. But still, I'm pretty sure uh, they're going to they're gonna latch on to that. And let everybody know that Cambodia is a very intelligent country. I know their detractors will say otherwise, but... Hey man, that's the data. <laughs> that's what we have to go with right now. But I think intelligence is uh, something we spend too much time thinking about. I really do, because those tests, I mean, they, you know, they focus on, on problem solving and uh, kind of a linear kind of thinking. And I don't think an IQ score necessarily measures how smart someone is. It just means they are more intelligent in a certain area than maybe, you know, other people. Like I can I consider myself when it comes to intelligence as average at best. <clears throat> I don't know a lot about everything. I tend to focus more on learning more about the things I like and enjoy rather than overall knowledge. I mean, you can you can put a math test in front of me that's meant for a fifth grader and uh, I will freeze up like the Arctic Circle. <laughs> you know? <clears throat> I will go down faster than a Malaysian airliner in that test. Because I've never understood math, I just don't get it. But I have all the respect in the world for people who can just take an equation, do it in their heads, and come up with the right answer in about five seconds. It amazes me. But still, we're all intelligent in our own ways when it comes to certain things. And uh, I don't trust uh, I online IQ tests period anyway <laughs> they're usually run by shady companies who are just trying to get some get some of your information so they can uh, sell it to third parties and uh, give you an answer you'd like so you keep coming back for more when I see people doing all these Facebook things you know like uh, oh this this site says my IQ is uh, 150 you know which is like genius status and then I see them post something uh, they can barely be read because it's so misspelled. You know, I have to question. <laughs> I have to question those 
the results of those tests. That's all I'm saying. But anyway, those two, uh, those two stories came up today and I thought since we were going to be out and about before it gets dark, go ahead and make this video. The last couple months I've not been able to make a lot of videos, but I've been submitting a lot of stories to different uh, online publications, different horror stories. And believe it or not, man, writing a, writing a horror story, especially one that you want to be accepted, it, it takes a lot of work. It's, it's actually not, not easy. Ideas are easy. Like, I hear ideas all the time, you know? Some, uh, Twitter is full of ideas. You know, hey, why don't somebody write a horror story about a man who, uh, who uh, drinks some goat's milk and all of a sudden he starts turning into a goat possessed by Satan or something. <laughs> you know, somebody will say something like that. And I'm like, you know, that would actually, uh, that story could actually work. You can do it. But then the process of sitting down and writing, uh, you know, that's the hard part. That's where it requires work and uh, you got to put your head down and, you know, I've learned I, I have to shut off my, I have to shut off my uh, cell data if I'm going to be writing lengthy, just so I don't keep getting interrupted by alerts and dings and all that good stuff. And then you sit there sometimes for an hour and you wrote one good, <laughs> one good little freaking paragraph, you know, and you mine can't come up with where else you want to go with this thing and uh but then at other times you know it just flows i mean i've written stories in like two days and uh had one accepted my story in the in the upcoming anthology ooze little bursts of body horror i just got my contributor copy uh yesterday and man those stories are really good me and 19 other authors uh, are all included and you should pre-order that but uh, when I first heard about it I wrote a story and I sent it in and the editor sent it back and said uh, I like your story but it's uh, the beginning is a little too similar to another story uh, and I don't want to uh, I don't want to have these stories all be the same, so do you have another one that deals with body horror? And I said, of course, yes, I do. Of course, I lied. No, I didn't. That's not my preferred genre. I don't write a lot of body horror. But I wanted to be in this anthology because of some of the other authors' names, and I knew if I could get in there, that's something I could put in my, you know, my bio and everything as a published... Uh, horror story author that's always nice and so I was like okay now I got a couple days to come up with come up with something else and then an idea came to me and I was like okay let's start here and then it just flowed and I'm telling you two days later it was done it was edited uh, correctly she actually sent me back a letter praising my editing because I'm sure you know editors sometimes get stories that need a lot of fixing up and touching up but I I try to do that kind of as I go along kind of but I can't think of anything else to write I'll go back to what I've already written and try to try to clean up some of the misspelled words or some of the phrases that might sound a little weird I'll take those out or change them around so yeah I was really happy when that one uh, got accepted it's always nice and yeah it was just 10 bucks but you know what it's only a 2,000 word story so it's and all the stories that I send they get rejected for one reason or the other I think that's okay too because I'll just put them in my next anthology and uh, so I'll have plenty of uh, material It all depends on perspective, how you look at things. I 
All right, so that's going to do it for this one. Thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed any part of it, uh, give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you have not, and be sure to check out all my links down below. You can donate through PayPal or even Ko-Fi.com as long as you leave me your email address when you do it. And donate at least $10 or more. I will send you all my books right to your inbox plus any future books of mine. And also there are other channels vlogging from this part of the world. They are all down below as well. Check all those out. Good channels. Good information. Be sure to uh, subscribe to them as well. All my social media is down below and links to other things. Check them all out and I hope you enjoy them. All right, from Siem Reap, Cambodia, home of the intelligent people <laughs> and lots and lots of nuts. I'll talk to you guys in the next one.